Today is Tuesday, the 10th of September. Welcome to our morning devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We'll consider just Luke one forty seven today. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And just a comment, as I mentioned yesterday, some of these devotions will be for a certain time of year as we work to close out the remainder of the book. Um, today, for example, is a New Year's Day or a New Year's Week message. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Of all the festivals celebrated by the Christian church during the year, the one that most captivates the world at large is New Year's. The world stays awake at the last midnight hour as the old year passes, and after the last bell has sounded, it greets the new year with rejoicing, and well-wishers exchange greetings and express their hopes for the months to come. Oh, if only the world knew its true condition, it would not rejoice, but weep. It would not put on festive clothing, but would instead cover itself with mourning clothes. There would be no shouts of joy in the air, but rather sighs for mercy from the throne of grace. The person who lacks a savior is immeasurably unhappy. As he reflects on the old year, he cannot look back with joy, like a hiker toward the mountains behind, for the joys of the past have vanished, but the stain of sins committed during that time has not departed with them. Those sins have been entered into God's book of debts, and he has no savior to strike them out with atoning blood. His sins have left the world, but they have gone up into heaven, and there they stand before the throne of God and accuse him. They hover over his head like storm clouds of divine wrath, and there is no one to scatter them. The person without a savior is even less comforted by looking forward into the new year. That year lies dark and gloomy before him, like a thick curtain no human eye can penetrate and no human hand can lift. No one knows what will befall him in the new year, and how and where and if he will end it. Upon whom can the person without a savior reply? He cannot say, I rely upon God, for he does not know God. What guarantee can he have that in the new year, God has not written in his book for him sickness rather than health, poverty rather than enrichment, disgrace rather than honor, suffering rather than joy, and death rather than life? What assurance is there that God's patience toward him will not end in this new year. Perhaps he will say, Behold, I have come now each year and look for fruit on the fig tree, fruit of repentance and faith, but I do not find it. Come, death, cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? Oh, how many began last year with the most joyful hopes, and where are they now? Do not seek them in their palaces, for they have moved out, and others have taken their place. Their bodies already decay outside in their graves, and their souls stand before God's judgment. Their hopes at the start of the year rested upon the most unholy deception, for only the person who celebrates a happy Christmas can also celebrate a happy New Year. Only the person who knows that he has a Savior can set out comforted, on the pilgrim's journey of his life. Such a person may always be a poor sinner, but he does not deceive himself when he looks into the future with great joys, hopes, and confidence. In him, God will do more than he can ask for and understand. He has the Savior as helmsman and his cross 
as sail. He can then rejoicingly weigh anchor and boldly pilot on the open sea of life. His ship does not run aground, it is not wrecked, and it does not go under. Instead, it will certainly arrive in safe harbor in this year or another one. And so we pray. Jesus is the name we treasure, name beyond what words can tell, name of gladness, name of pleasure, ear and heart delighting well, name of sweetness, passing measure, saving us from sin and hell. Amen. And we pray, Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray pray that you from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.